Well, hi there. I'm here today with a mitten-handed tree triceratops, which was poorly named the Jackson's Chameleon because chameleons are some of the coolest lizards in the world. I would say they're one of the coolest animals that exists, period, anywhere, at any time in history, including dinosaurs, which, I mean, this, this does look like a triceratops, does it not? Uh, if triceratops had crazy mitten hands and walked around with prehensile tails up in the trees, this is what it would be. What a wonderful beast. They get the best toes in the world. I, I love chameleon hands because they got bundles of toes and they use them to wrap around things and grab hold and so they got a bundle of three and a bundle of two and on the front they got the three in together and then the two on the outside and then on the back they've got the three on the outside and the two on the inside just the greatest toes in the world and then don't get me started on those eyeballs and that tongue those eyeballs move completely independently, so they're looking at two different things all at once, almost all the time, until they see something delicious. And then they p p bring both eyeballs forward, so they have proper depth perception, because they've got this incredible weapon they're about to deploy, which is this crazy tongue that's like the same length as their body that they can shoot out like a rocket missile on a tether, and it grows out there and it grabs onto things and pulls it back into its mouth, and then it gets chomped. How do you beat that? And then, on top of that, they got one of my favorite things anything can have, which is a prehensile tail. Chameleons rock! We've discussed this before. Chameleons can be difficult pets to keep. They're just, they're just not a beginner level pet, generally speaking. They're, they're, they're something that is more for somebody who has a little bit of experience with reptile keeping under their belt. But, is it possible that this specific chameleon, the Jackson's chameleon, might be the right pet chameleon, the right pet lizard, for you. Overall, we give the Jackson's Chameleon a score of 2.8 out of 5, which hopefully will make sense here in a moment. We're going to break it down into our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. Let's begin with handleability, shall we? For handleability, we give the Jackson's Chameleon a score of 3 out of 5. They are absolutely one of the most handleable chameleons you can possibly get. Chameleons in general are kind of grumpy guys. Uh, they can be inclined to bite, though the bite is really not anything to worry about. I've been bitten by chameleons and it leaves like a diamond shaped little imprint on you for a minute, but usually doesn't even draw any blood. That's mostly just hilarious. I honestly wished it would have scarred or something because it would have been the most ridiculous scar to have. But they're very, very handleable. I mean, honestly, the worst part about it is just that their, their nails are kind of pokey, eh, but they're not going to hurt you. They're not going to break your skin. It's just you can feel them all the time. It's like little mitten-handed acupuncture. They're not very quick. Uh, they're not going to run away from you, right? If, if you lose track of a chameleon while handling it, handling reptiles isn't for you. They've also got this awesome prehensile tail, which helps them hold on to you while you're handling them. It's also something that they're not going to drop. Chameleons don't drop their tails, and I love that about them. Really, the only downside to handling a Jackson's chameleon is just that they can stress out if you handle them excessively, so you want to keep handling sessions relatively short and fairly infrequent. And that's kind of a bummer. You know, some, some reptiles you could get out just about every day. Jackson's chameleon, probably best to do so more rarely and for brief periods of time. When it comes to care, we give the Jackson's Chameleon a score of 2 out of 5. They are, like all chameleons, going to require some sort of a screen enclosure. Chameleons in general need a lot of ventilation, which means they, they, you know, they need air movement going on. Real stagnant air is not best for them. But more importantly, they often don't get along well with their own reflection. Chameleons are sort of anti-social beasts. They usually hate other chameleons. I have noticed Jackson's chameleons seem to tolerate one another better than any other chameleons I know of, but still, if it has to look at the reflection of another Jackson's chameleon all day long, it's not going to like that. In addition to the screen enclosure, inside of it you're going to need a lot of climbing branches and foliage. I like live plants in with my animals where possible, but artificial plants can also be a really great option for these guys. They probably don't mind as much as I do. Though having live plants in there can help increase the humidity in the enclosure, and that's something that you're going to need 
with a chameleon. They will not drink from a bowl, like a water bowl, which means that you need water to be moving. The best option seems to be a dripping system of some sort. I mean, you can, you can manufacture one by just like poking a small hole in a bottle and allowing it to drip all day long. They also sell dripping systems, which can make it even easier and work even better. You also should probably mist the enclosure fairly regularly. That's mostly just going to be to keep the humidity at a proper level for them. Chameleons in general, one of the best things about them is that they're very active, which makes them really fun to have. But it also means that they work up an appetite. And Jackson's chameleons, just like all chameleons, they eat a lot for their size. Jackson's chameleons, being a smaller chameleon, aren't going to eat as much as, say, a panther chameleon, or a veiled, or a meller's chameleon, one of these bigger chameleons, but they still eat a lot for a lizard this size. And that means you're going to need a lot of live insect feeders on a regular basis. I'd recommend a, a broad diversity of insect feeders, things like crickets, dubia roaches, hornworms, these are really, really great feeders for Jackson's chameleons. They will just eat those up all day long. Remember to dust those with calcium and other vitamin supplements regularly. We'll have links to all this stuff down in the description as well. They are going to need a place to bask, which means they're going to need a, a UVA basking bulb. And ultraviolet UVB is going to be really important for them as well. And those lights are sort of expensive. We'll talk about that later. But it's something that you are going to need with your Jackson's Chameleon. When it comes to hardiness, we give these guys a score of two out of five. Uh, it's nothing personal against the Jackson's Chameleon specifically. It's actually one of the better chameleons as far as hardiness goes, but chameleons in general are just not very forgiving. Even under the best of circumstances, chameleons are gen tend to be fairly short-lived. Male Jackson's Chameleons like this one, you can tell a male from a female very easily from a young age with Jackson's Chameleons because males have these three big horns on their head like Triceratops and the females don't. Sometimes they got a little bit of a nose horn but the females are basically without horns and the males have these three big old horns so it's not hard to tell the males from the females and the males are just going to live longer generally than the females do. They actually can live up close to 10 years, which is a really long time for a chameleon. Females, though, are still going to live a lot less time. They don't lay eggs like many other chameleons. Like when we talked about panther chameleons, we discussed the fact that the females will start laying eggs. These guys are live bearers, but the females still invest a lot of energy into reproduction starting at a fairly young age, and they just don't live nearly as long as the males. And like all chameleons, they're just not super resilient. So if you make a mistake, there's a very good chance your chameleon could just die. And there's no going back from that. And that's that's just one of the difficult things about keeping chameleons. It's the main reason that I don't recommend them for beginners. If you are thinking about keeping a chameleon as your first pet reptile, it's definitely something you're going to need to research heavily. And I would recommend speaking a lot with experienced chameleon keepers, maybe doing a little internship with them so that you're as prepared as is humanly possible before you start working with chameleons. When it comes to availability, we give these guys a score of three out of five. These are probably, I would say, the second most commonly available pet chameleon. It's gonna be between them and panther chameleons for number two, number one being the veiled chameleon. It's probably the most available. But these guys are pretty darn available. They're both available captive bred because they're actually not that difficult to breed. I mean, chameleons are very, very invested in reproduction and so it's not difficult to motivate them to reproduce. And being live bearers, you don't even need to incubate the eggs. The female will incubate them internally and they'll be born live. So they're fairly easy to breed. On top of that, they are an introduced species into both Florida and Hawaii. And quite a bit of the time, adult imports come in from those places. And it's never ideal to get an import but when you're talking about getting an invasive species imported into the pet trade, that's as good as it gets, especially when they're not being imported from very far away. It, honestly, I mean, as far as just the ethics of it, that's probably as good or better than buying a captive bred individual. You know, the health, though, is going to be the only risk that you're really taking. They might be in worse health than a captive bred baby. Generally, you'll be able to find them perhaps at expos, occasionally in pet stores, definitely online if you're willing to ship one in. They are out there, it's just you're not going to see them everywhere. This one, for example, comes from one of those great pet stores. We've talked many times about how there are great pet stores that we should support, 
and there are not so great pet stores that we shouldn't. And this, this particular Jackson's Chameleon comes to us from Animal Ark in Orem, Utah, which is one of our favorite pet stores in the whole wide world. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Jackson's Chameleon a score of 4 out of 5. This is probably, at least of the common chameleon species or the long-lived chameleon species, this is probably the least expensive of the chameleons. They're not cheap. Chameleons are not generally cheap lizards, but these guys are very, very affordable. The enclosure also is not cheap. These screen enclosures aren't, aren't super inexpensive, but they're not that expensive. And being a smaller chameleon, they don't want, need one that's quite as large as you would need for a veiled chameleon or a panther chameleon, though they will certainly use the space. Chameleons are so fun because they are super active. And if you give them the space, they will use it. And that is a really fun thing about them. One of the more expensive things that you will need for them will be the lighting. You're going to need the UVA basking lights and the UVB uh, ultraviolet lights that we discussed before. And again, we've got links to these things down in the description. Those UV lights, you're going to need to replace those bulbs every six months to a year, depending on what kind you get. So keep that in mind as an ongoing cost as well. You also, I would recommend getting a dripping system, though you can make your own. A, a pre-bought dripping system will probably work a little bit better. And they're fairly expensive to feed unless you're breeding your own feeders. We'll try to do a video in the near future about some of the best types of feeders that you can breed yourself, because that's something that could really save a lot with the cost of keeping a Jackson's Chameleon or any insect-eating reptile. So overall, Hopefully it's made sense why we've given the Jackson's Chameleon a score of 2.8 out of 5. They are wonderful. I absolutely love them. I, I'm not keeping a chameleon right at the moment, and I've been considering a panther chameleon for a long time because I love them. But recently, I have really fallen for the Jackson's Chameleon as well, and this might be the next chameleon I get when I'm ready for my next chameleon, because what a special beast. And who wouldn't want to have a Triceratops that lives in the trees? I still wouldn't say this is an easy pet. I mean, there's a reason I'm not keeping a chameleon right now, and it's just because a chameleon is a considerable daily time investment that, I, you know, it's time that I maybe don't have available to me right at the moment. And on top of that, you know, they're, they're just... They're, they're challenging. It's, it isn't a, a beginning pet lizard, and it's something that you definitely need to be prepared for because they're just not going to tolerate your mistakes. So make sure, before you get any type of a chameleon, that you are absolutely ready, because you've got to get it right the first time. But, if you are ready for a chameleon, it's hard to say that you could do much better than the Jackson's Chameleon. I definitely recommend them. They're amazing lizards. And thanks again to all of our Patreon supporters. We love you guys. As always, like and subscribe. Make sure to click that little bell so that you get a notification when our, our future videos come out. We're going to cover a lot more chameleons and other cool lizards, and stay tuned for that video about how to breed your own feeder insects, because that will be a major savings once you can get that going. We hope to see you real soon. That tongue. Whoa, good one, buddy. If I found out that I was born with a prehensile tail and my parents had it removed, I would be so upset. Uh, what's with the horn? Uh, it's horns. cool. Horns. And they use them to battle with other males in the trees? How great is that? <laughs> it's called Jackson's Chameleon. Uh-huh. Uh, I think they really missed out on some great naming opportunities. Oh, there. yeah. Mitten-handed tree ceratops was absolutely the name they should have gone with. <laughs> the googly-eyed mitten-handed tree ceratops. <laughs> How did nobody see this one? Uh, it, 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 that is a travesty <laughs> of naming. If you lose track of a chameleon while handling it, handling reptiles isn't for you. Did you say <laughs> that if it gets away from you, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> handling reptiles is not for you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm over here stifling a laugh, and you just, just went through it. <laughs> I appreciate right. your self-control. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry. You sound like Yoda. <laughs> just honestly, like it's right up there with baby tortoise handling. Right? <laughs> but the baby tortoise runs away from you. Handling a tortoise, handling any reptile, probably not going to work out. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Watch as I then lose track of this one. Yeah. We got 45 Wait, minutes. Where'd he go? Where's that? Hank Chameleon. <laughs> I did not even know they could fly. 